looking at 10 through 18. Let's look at number 11. Especially since it says Y could be. <coughs> it hasn't given us enough information to find C. <coughs> so let's just start the problem and see what happens here. DY over Y equals X squared DX. There's our separate. Then we'll integrate. Ah, perfect. Tyler, I already know you, you know how to answer that one. Natural log of y. Natural log of y. Uh, Monty, how about the other side? Good. Plus c. Uh, although I'm curious what plus c is going to do, and we don't know what plus c is, so we'll we'll see what happens. Um, I think I would fish hook to get to solve for y. So y equals e to the x cubed over 3 plus c. And now I think I start looking for my for answers. Um, is it b? Why is it not b? That 7 is, uh, is not in the exponent like it is here. So it's not b. This is where, again, we can make this c e to the x cubed over 3. And now it looks like answer choice c, where c is 2. Number 13. If y equals f of x is the solution to this, then, all right, so separate y dy, x dx, integrate. Calculus volunteers here. Oh, although these are kind of the same. So, Gregory, you go first, lead the way, and then Kylie ought to be able to follow your example. Uh, y squared. Very nice. Kylie? Very nice. Okay, let's solve for y. So let's multiply through by 2. Remember, c times 2 is still just c. Square root both sides. plus or minus on there. You want to pick the plus or minus right now based on my answer choice or my uh, my initial condition there? Which one does it have to be? It's got to be the minus to end up with negative 4. So negative 5 equals negative square root x, whoops, x is Oops, did that backwards. Y is negative 4. X is negative 5. So let's see. We could square both sides. And C would have to be negative 9. So there's... Oh, it's multiple choice. So let's put those two things together. There's a negative out front. And x squared minus 9. <coughs> I'm not sure I'd recommend this, but I wonder if A is the only one that meets this initial condition. Meaning it's multiple choice, so who cares about doing the antiderivative stuff? Just plug in negative 5 and see which one gives you negative 4. That one does. The only other one that might is this one, <coughs> but it doesn't. So the only one that commit meets that criteria is the first one. So, you know, multiple choice tests, sometimes you can avoid doing the actual problem as long as you check part of it. Uh, let's look at number 15.
question. Uh, what do you think we should do to separate this thing? We haven't had to do this before. Well, in this context, anyway. Any thoughts? There's a square root of y on both of those things. Nothing? Let's factor it out. So that leaves me 1 over square root of y dy, 1 minus sine x dx. So that was the reason I wanted to work this problem, is the factoring issue. It happens on number uh, 14 as well. Rewrite this as a power so that I can integrate it. <coughs> Let's see. Anders, how about the antiderivative of y to the negative one half? The y to the negative one half. Yes. I'm going to write it as y to the 1 half, but that is the same thing as square root, so yes. Uh, Addy, you get to do two of them over here. What's the antiderivative of 1? X. X. And the antiderivative of negative sine? Positive cosine, because the derivative of cosine would give me a negative sign. And then plus c. So let's divide everybody by 2. x over 2, 1 half cosine x plus c. And then square both sides. And start looking at our answer choices. And there's only one thing it could be. Like we had 2 thirds and 2 thirds, those are out. So they're squared and squared, um, but the only one it could be is is d. That's the I think that's the only one. Oh, that one half, one fourth in there. Oh, because if we factor one half out <coughs> from the squared, it's got to be d. I mean, I can plug it in, but that's the only one that fits that has an x, a cosine, and a constant. X cosine and constant. The other one doesn't have an x in it, so it couldn't be b. So uh, you guys know this, but start using the multiple choices to narrow down your answers. All right, last one I want to do is number 17. Is that a solution to this? Where y fourth is the fourth derivative. So I want to check and see if this is a solution to this. So I need to plug into this and see if it's true. Well, I know what y is. That's e to the negative 2x. How can I figure out what y to the fourth is? Or it's not y to the fourth. The fourth derivative of y. Well, there's not a magical way to get there. So we'll just call on four people and then see if we can make it all the way. So, Kira, what's the first derivative of e to the negative 2x? Uh, negative 2x plus 2 times. Uh, oh, so close. Chain rule, I want the derivative of negative 2x. Yeah. So what's the derivative of negative 2x? Not x. Uh, you're thinking antiderivative. Oh, sorry. Wait. Oh, okay, so it's just 
negative 2. So yeah, keep the e the same, but then multiply by the derivative of the exponent chain rule. Bryce, how about the second derivative? 4e to the negative 2x. Good. Start to see a pattern here in a minute. Uh, Ava, the third derivative? Negative 8e to the negative 2x. And Leo, the fourth derivative? Yep, and so that's what goes in as the fourth derivative, 16e to the negative 2x, minus 16e to the negative 2x equals 0. So yes, that is true.